Hi dear friends and net aspirants welcome back to our channel high point once again and here you will get ample resources and study materials related to NTA UGC net English language and literature so now currently we are doing a lengthy series related to Shakespeare much more videos are about to follow so like you can see on the screen today's topic is yet another comedy by William Shakespeare much ado about nothing yeah it's one of his early comedies so so far you have seen some uh, works by William Shakespeare I hope you are following and you have subscribed to my channel uh, high point I mean YouTube channel so if you have not subscribed please subscribe uh, to the channel and also if you like this video after watching it please press the like button as well and uh, other than YouTube you can find me in different platforms such as I have a website known as www.highpoint uh, the link is there in the description box you can click it and uh, go to the uh, website if you want because uh, there I am sharing plenty of simplified study materials for NTA UGC net English language and literature and uh, in the form of audio lectures and also you can have 300 plus downloadable pdf study material simply simplified comprehensible and well arranged chronologically you can find there and also you can find previous and practice set of question papers that you can attempt as many times as possible uh, in the website so if you want to know more about the uh, course that we are providing there you can also whatsapp me or call me in this given number and i also maintain a whatsapp group in which i am sharing daily quizzes study cards and also news and updates related to ugc net english uh, so you can uh, message me in this number or you can go to the description box and click the link and directly join the whatsapp group so i have also a well arranged and well maintained Instagram uh, page too. My Instagram ID is right here. You can follow me in Instagram for more saved materials uh, such as study cards, notes, uh, inspirational quotes and also uh, reels and small videos related to English language and literature. I am sharing all these things in a daily basis. So don't uh, waste any chance of improving your knowledge about English language and literature. Particularly don't hesitate to visit my website. If you are studying on your own, you can visit my channel. Sorry, you can visit my website to have an idea about what all topics you need to study for UGC net English language and literature second paper and also how we are arranged there and to have a chronological idea about the authors of English language and English literature as well as world literature okay so guys if you are ready with a paper and pen as always we can move on to the introduction to the play so it's a comedy by William Shakespeare and it was uh, written between 1598 and 1599 probably and it is included in the first folio which was published in 1623 see in every other I think most of the plays when I am discussing I am telling this uh, point recurrently because this first folio and its publication here is important uh, it's a one it's a one of the major uh, kind of uh, thing that you have to remember about Shakespeare's uh, works and it is set in Messia, Messina sorry Messina so uh, the setting of the story is Messina maybe this particular place is not familiar to everyone because most of his stories are happening in some of the place that we are heard of like Scotland Ireland or uh, Venice or England Britain or Denmark so in that way we have heard about this uh, places and countries much but uh, less about Messina but this story much ado about nothing is um, is set in Messina the titles play on words refer references the secrets and trickery that form the backbone of the place comedy intrigue and action so when we hear this title of this play much ado about nothing we will get confused and we will think about what does it mean even so this pun or the word play that we can see in this title it refers to uh, the secrets and trickery that is going on inside that play and it forms the this uh, tree secrets and trickery 
sorry trickery that is there in the play it uh, happens to form as the backbone uh, of the play that generally produces comedy uh, and action in this play okay as we move on to the detailed summary of the play we will uh, come to know about more about the justif how this title is justified inside the play the main source of the play can be traced to greek so some greek text served as the major source for this play and ariosto included the story in orlando furioso so the, see we can see the story in ariosto's uh, work orlando furioso and the spencer makes a mention of it is in fairy queen so this fa story of much ado much ado about nothing is also that story not the shakespearean work but the story of this particular play has a mention in edmund spencer's fairy queen and edmund spencer is yet another important poet of the age elizabethan age so if you are looking for the series of shakespearean works and shakespearean uh, things related to shakespearean that i have already mentioned i have already shared you can go to the i button and also literature so far discussed about uh, age of elizabeth also i have given as a playlist in the i button i have given the link there so you can click it and you can watch it if you are the first time watching my video now let's move on to characters of the play so i have just mentioned the important characters not minor characters are mentioned here so don pedro don pedro is prince of aragon don uh, john his bastard brother see i don't actually approve of this word bastard because nobody is bastard there it's just because of some social construct that we are calling some person bastards but uh, john don john is don pedro's bastard brother and claudio a young lord of florence favorite of don pedro okay the benedict benedict is a young lord of padua favorite of don pedro leonetto leonetto is governor of messina antonio his brother balthasar servant to don john borachio and conrad these are followers of don john Dogberry and Verges, two foolish officers. A sexton, a friar, a boy. Hero, daughter of Leonetto. Beatrice, niece to Leonetto. Margaret and Ursula, gentle women attending on Hero. So these are the major characters that we have here. Pause the video and take down the important characters because that will help you to memorize these things more. So once you know the story of the play, then it is lot more easier to understand and memorize the, uh, you know, things happening inside the play and also the major characters as well. So we will have an act wise. summary i'm not going in detail about this uh, play because this is not that much that much accomplished and that much popular comedy by shakespeare but anyway because it has some mentions in the ugc net english question papers i'm not going to avoid it that's why i have included it in here so let's have let's move on to the summary of the play so what is happening in act 1 so every major characters are introduced so when the story got exposed when the act got exposed act 1 got exposed every other major characters are introduced in it when the play opens leonetto governor of messina his daughter hero and niece beatrice are on the stage so in the first act itself and in the, in the first scene of act 1 we can see leonetto governor of messina and his daughter hero and her niece or oh sorry his niece beatrice are on the stage a messenger comes to them with the message that don pedro prince aragon his favorite claudio and benedict and his half brother don john are coming to messina after their victory victory in the war so a messenger comes while they are there a messenger comes to leonetto the message is that you know don pedro prince of aragon and his favorite uh, claudio and benedict his friend come and another lord of padua and also uh, his half brother don john these people are coming to messina after their victory in the war they already knew each other so these people they already knew each other and benedict and beatrice comments their merry war of wit so benedict and beatrice when they come after this messenger these people come to the palace of leonetto and they stay there and benedict and beatrice they always engage in merry war of wit and you know they they talk in they talk in a witty way okay so one uh, say something another will uh, say some counter attacks 
upon what the other person said so it's like a mere war of wit uh, that uh, that uh, benedict and beatrix engages engage and claudio tells to benedict and don pedro that he is attracted to hero so claudio here tells claudio is favorite of don pedro and claudio tells to benedict that you know benedict and don pedro together that he is attracted to hero hero is daughter of leonardo let's move on don pedro offers his help in this matter so immediately after hearing this from claudio don pedro offers that he will try to uh, make these two people together don pedro agrees to play a proxy for claudio in wooing hero so proxy means you know don pedro will go to uh, whom go to hero and he will pretend that uh, he is wooing hero and uh, everybody will think that he is wooing hero but actually he will go to uh, hero and he will talk to uh, hero on behalf of claudio's love okay actually he won't be wooing hero uh, but he will talk and he will convey claudio's feelings to hero we can also see that don john has not fully given up his hostility to don pedro so even though don john he is there with don pedro and he is uh, you know uh, fighting along with don pedro and all he is not fully given up his hostility his uh, vengeance or his uh, enmity towards don pedro because he is a, just a half brother a kind of a uh, bastard brother to john don pedro for that reason he believes that he needs to beg uh, to have some power or something some wealth to don pedro if, if he wants that in in his life okay so that don john doesn't want antonio brother to leonardo over here's a part of the conversation between claudio and don pedro and informs leonardo that don pedro is in love with hero see this is what happens when we hear something half not full and we assume things okay we we presume that something is real something as truth and factual when we hear a conversation or something uh, half not full okay here exactly that happens with antonio and antonio brother to leonardo he over hears probably the last part of claudio and don pedro's conversation and you know leonardo uh, was informed by antonio that don pedro is in love with hero but he was only telling claudio that he will woo hero on uh, his behalf and meanwhile don john reveals his sadness of being the mercy in the mercy of don pedro to uh, conrad so conrad was actually uh, they are like uh, friends with don john and he reveals his sadness and gloominess because he is always in the mercy of don pedro if he wants some power if he want to act something he cannot do that uh, with free will because he lacks that much power when he compares himself with don pedro being a bastard brother to him and conrad asked to wait for the suitable time to strike back so he is not calming down john don john but conrad says that you wait for the suitable time the suitable will uh, time will come and then you can strike back and you can have your power money wealth authority whatever you want later borasio joins them and tells about don pedro's plan to woo hero in proxy for claudio so here borasio he knows the exact thing what is going to happen why don pedro is going to woo hero because he informs uh, you know don john and uh, conrad that you know don pedro is going to woo hero in proxy on behalf of claudio okay actually don pedro is not going to woo hero but he is just going to inform his love sorry uh, claudio's love towards hero and everybody else will think that he is wooing hero and nobody will actually obstruct that thing because claudio is prince and don john saw an opportunity in here and asked help from borasio and conrad that they immediately gives so don john when he heard this uh, new information from borasio he saw an opportunity uh, to have to execute his uh, some intrigue plans he asked help from borasio and conrad and every support they lent immediately okay there ends act 1 now begins act 2 a banquet begins and dancers appear with men wearing masks so a banquet is happening in act first uh, sorry in act second in the beginning of act second and dancers uh, are there and men are wearing masks 
Don Pedro and Hero and Benedict and Beatrice started dancing together. So these two couples, they started to dance together. Like Don Pedro and Hero, they uh, began to dance and Benedict, Benedict and Beatrice, they also started dancing together. Couple dance they are doing and Beatrice said about Benedict as the princess uh, fester and a dull fool without knowing that she is in she is dancing with Benedict. Okay, so since men are wearing masks, women they uh, have no full idea who is the man that they are you know they they are dancing. So Beatrice doesn't know that he, he uh, she is dancing with Benedict because he is wearing a mask. So Be Beatrice said that Benedict as the princess fester. So he she basically calls Benedict as princess's fester. Whatever the prince uh, Don Pedro tells to Benedict, he will obey that. He will always follow him in everywhere and he will have benefits also. So such a person is princess's fester. So Beatrice without knowing that she is dancing with Benedict, he calls Benedict as the princess's fester and a dull fool also without knowing that she is dancing with Benedict. Don John comes without a mask and identifies Claudio and tried to fill his mind against Don Pedro telling that Prince, is, Prince loves Hero pretending that he is talking to Benedict. Okay, so what happens? Don Joe comes to comes to uh, comes to this dancing hall banquet hall without wearing a mask and he immediately identified Claudio okay so he identified Claudio and he went to Claudio and he just uh, you know venomously he just said that see actually uh, Don Pedro actually loves Hero he is just pretending uh, that he is not uh, loving he just told to Claudio that he is going to uh, do a proxy for Claudio uh, and you know just pretending to woo uh, Hero in order to uh, you know in order to inform Hero about Claudio's love and all it's just a pretend see he told this to Claudio by pretending that he is talking to Benedict instead uh, Claudio actually he knows that he is talking to Claudio Don John knows that he is talking to Claudio but he pretended that he is revealing this fact about Don Pedro to Benedict okay now but later Prince tells him that Gehero agreed to marry Claudio and dispels his doubts. So Claudio after hearing this from Don John, he was doubtful about the intentions of the prince and he later tells him that you know he when maybe the prince came to know about his doubt and the prince tells him tells Claudio that Hero agreed to marry Claudio and dispels all his uh, doubts and their marriage is fixed in Monday and prince seeks the help of Leonardo. So their marriage was already fixed in Monday and the prince went and asked the help of Leonardo and Don John wants to prevent this marriage by portraying Hero as an unchaste woman having an affair with a stranger. So now Don John knew that see his first plan with Don Pedro and Claudio was a failure so now he wanted to prevent the marriage by portraying Hero as an unchaste uh, woman and worthy woman who is having an affair with a stranger he can just cannot go and tell that see hero is enchased and she is not a worthy woman and no one should marry her you should stop the marriage he just he just cannot tell that but he needs to prove that so instead uh, in order to do prove that uh, he he actually creates a plan he plots what does he plot he plot he plans to bring all of them in a garden and from a distance Baracio calling his love Margaret and thereby mistakes her as hero making Claudius consider her unchaste and call of the marriage so this was his plan okay Don John planned in such a way that Baracio already supports Don John so Don John planned in that way that they will secretly bring everyone in a garden and from a distance Borashi will call his love Margaret from a distance and 
he will create a situation that by mistake hero will be present there so everyone else will think that Barashio uh, you know uh, a stranger is there nobody will recognize Barashio because he is standing in a distance so you know the call will fr come from a distance so uh, he will actually call Margaret by by mistake he will make the situation such a way that hero will be present there everybody will think that a stranger called hero and hero is there in order to uh, have a conversation this uh, with this stranger in secret so that will give the impression to Claudius that Hero is an unchaste woman unworthy of the marriage and he will thereby call off the marriage. Benedict finds gloomy Claudius in the garden. Okay, Benedict was there and sorry, Claudius was there and Benedict finds him and he saw him and he was approaching. While he was approaching, he overheard Don Pedro, Leonetta and Claudio talking in the garden. And what was their topic? There, that was Beatrice and Benedict. So he overheard that Beatrice and Benedict, uh, Beatrice loves Benedict. Okay, Beatrice in love with Benedict. So that's what Benedict is overhearing and after hearing so they have no such rapport earlier like Beatrice really scorns Benedict he she has doesn't have any that kind of likeness towards Benedict it actually they were just talking it is like you know they saw Benedict coming in order to make a prank like that Don Pedro Leonardo Claudio they are talking like that and uh, Benedict exactly fell for that trap and he believes it but these people intentionally, intentionally did to make him believe that. So it's like they saw that Benedict is approaching and they pretended that he, they didn't see him. And Don Pedro, Leonardo, Claudio, they talked like, you know, about Beatrice's love for Benedict and he overheard it and he believed it exactly how they thought. See how overhearing and planning all these things are, uh, people are doing inside this play have nothing to do with reality okay that's how this title is continuously justifying throughout this play much ado about nothing okay so there ends act two now begins act three beatrice was made to overhear the conversation between hero and ursula so here just like benedict was uh, you know trapped to overhear the conversation between those people and believe that Beatrice in love with Benedict in the same way Beatrice was made to overhear or Beatrice was uh, fell into the trap that they uh, pretended that Harrow and Ursula they pretended that they never saw Beatrice coming and they were talking about you know about Benedict and how uh, he was impressed by Beatrice and all. So they, this creates an impression that in, in her that Benedict loves her deeply. So here both Beatrice and Benedict after hearing, uh, you know, uh, hearing from their friends and uh, uh, you know the people there or hearing them they believe that you know they love each other. Okay. The other person believe that the uh, the uh, counter person loves him or her. Don Pedro tells Benedict the change happened to him and tells him that he is in love with love and he denies it and goes with Leonardo for a private talk. So Don Pedro pretends that you know we don't know what happened to you. You actually changed a lot. So uh, Don Pedro predicted that he knows that Benedict overheard their conversation earlier and now he believes it and he is in love so he predicts that you know you are in love with someone that's why you have uh, changed like this so after hearing this from don pedro benedict denies it and goes with Leonardo to have a private talk don john comes and declares that he can prove that hero is a disloyal woman so now don john wanted to uh, you know prove that hero is a disloyal woman so don john comes and declares and announces that hero is a disloyal woman and i can prove it very well and claudio and don pedro were shocked by it and they said that they will dis disgrace her publicly if it is true so after hearing this claudio is sad and gloomy because uh, a moment depart from his love is unbearable for him that's why he was sad and gloomy in the garden so while he is so much in love with, uh, sorry, so much in love with uh, whom? 
some is in love with Hero. Claudio and Don Pedro cannot believe it and they said that if he could, if John could, Don John could prove her as uh, unchaste, then he, they will disgrace her publicly uh, no matter what and call off the marriage. Next, the fool Dogberry is introduced here and converse with a watchman and brings laughter. So Dogberry is a fool in much other about nothing. So do remember this fool's name because often questions are asked about uh, the name of the fool in a particular play by Shakespeare and also in match the following two I have, heard, I have seen such questions in the question papers, previous question papers. So do remember Dogberry as the fool in uh, much other about nothing. Then Don John Boracio and Conrad came to the stage and tells how Heinous plot against Hero was carried out and Claudius and Don Pedro were going to disgrace her. So Don John feels at more satisfaction about how his plan went absolutely great when he said that uh, you know Hero is enchased. Hero has do nothing to Don John. See, disgracing a woman is such a thing, horrible thing that nobody, no woman wants to have. It is not only a disgrace for the person, the personality of that person, but also it is a disgrace for the house as well for many reasons. So Don John, Borashio and Conrad, they are discussing about the half victory of their plan and Claudius and Don Pedro are also going to disgrace her that they are sure. By hearing it, the watchman pounced on them and arrested them. So, watchmen overheard this plan, overheard this conversation of Don John, Boracio and Conrad. Okay. So, another overhearing is happening by watchmen and pounced at them and arrested them. Okay. For plotting against Hero. Hero is actually governor's uh, daughter. It's a great crime to do that. Hero, Beatrice and Ursula talk about their love and wedding of Hero. Meanwhile, the arrival of Don Pedro and Claudio is announced. So Hero, Beatrice and Ursula, they were talking about the upcoming marriage and uh, Beatrice's and Benedict's love life and all. So uh, while they were talking, Don Pedro and Claudio is uh, coming uh, to them and they never reveals that they are going to have an eye upon Be Hero and uh, if uh, she proved to be uh, an unchaste woman then they are going to you know renounce her or you know publicly you will be disgraced. Dogberry and Verges reports Leonardo about their arrest or suspects but not in clear terms. So do here they are committing actually a great mistake uh, by not listening to Dogberry and Verges because Dogberry and Verges they arrested these conspirators like jo Don John, Boracio and Conrad but you know even though uh, he reported that to Leonardo they are not reporting what was the crime committed by these suspects in clear terms. If Leonardo already knew about the reason why they got arrested, then he will never uh, be ignorant about it, right? And he was in a hurry to go to his uh, daughter's wedding and asked them to have an inquiry in themselves. So what happened? He was Why he was not listening to them clearly and Dogberry could not uh, explain the crime committed by the suspects in clear terms because he was in a hurry to go to his daughter's wedding and asked them to ask Dogberry and Verges to have an inquiry uh, by themselves. Now, in Act 5, so, uh, sorry, so Act 3 ends there, Act 4 uh, starts the church scene. So, Act 4 contains the church scene in which Claudia refuses to marry Hero and accuses her. So, you know, um, Claudio refused here to marry uh, Hero in the church and accused her. Hero swoons when Claudio declares his refusal to re refusal in string, uh, strange uh, terms. Actually, Hero could not expect, Hero didn't expect this thing, right? Where she was all dressed and prepared for the wedding there for the engagement. But, you know, Claudio actually refused to marry Hero in the church while everyone else is there, present there and she swoons, she faints and Claudio declares his refusal in very harsh words. And Benedict consoles Leonardo and quickly asks about the movements of Hero in the last night to Beatrice. 
so benedict was also was not aware about all these things so benedict consorts leonardo father to hero and he, it was also a shock for leonardo too and he also asked about the movements the things that hero did in the last night to beatrice the friar asked leonardo to declare his daughter as dead for time being in the meantime they will find something to prove her innocence so so uh, now hero is uh, fainted and uh, she is not in, uh, in, a, in a healthy status so the friar who was there to solemnize their marriage asked leonardo to declare his daughter as dead okay for the time being for some time uh, when until she is proved as innocent you declare your uh, your daughter as dead because of this pain and you know we can in the meantime we can find some solution we will find whether this is true or not and beatrice asks benedict to kill claudio as he infects suffering to the innocent hero so beatrice in a moment he she asked that uh, asked benedict to kill claudio because she knows that hero is pure and hero is chaste and innocent okay moving on the interrogation of the suspects by dogberry and the watchman follows and the plot which led to hero's disgrace so uh, like asked by leonardo dogberry and uh, verges both of them do their questioning of the suspects and they revealed the their uh, the whole plot in which uh, that uh, plot was led to disgrace of hero borashi and conrad were brought before leonardo and hero's innocence was proved so um you know uh, the interrogation was clear and uh, what was their crime was revealed and this was uh, informed to leonardo and later the russian conrad were brought before leonardo and hero innocent was proved so there ends act 4 now begins the final act act 5 don pedro and claudio come in uh, as uh, leonardo was musing over his daughter so his daughter is as alive as before but everybody think that you know uh, she is dead already so don pedro and claudio they come in uh, come to leonardo and leonardo was brooding and musing over his daughter and leonardo was asked to marry his brother's daughter who looks exactly like hero and he, uh, he asked to see how funny right if he was in love truly in, truly in love claudio was in love with uh, hero then how ki, how come he can marry hero so soon i don't know but still Leonardo as he was thinking about his daughter Leonardo asked uh, uh, asked Claudio to marry his brother's daughter who looks like exactly like Hero In the last scene Beatrice and Benedict inform their desire to marry each other to the friar too so uh, as the plan between uh, marrying between marriage between Hero and uh, Claudio was once again planned by Leonardo. The last scene, Beatrice and Benedict also informed their desire to marry each other, and Hero, who appeared in a mask as Leonardo's brother's daughter, soon revealed as Hero herself to Claudio. So here also, who appeared, Hero, uh, for the marriage, Hero appeared as Leonardo's brother's daughter under a mask, but uh, later she revealed uh, to Claudio as Hero himself. Herself. and the play ends with the marriage and the celebration so the play ends with the two marriages between beatrice and benedict and uh, uh, hero and claudio so the play ends with the same marriage celebration so even though the overhearing and all actually finally resulted in marriage of people the young couples but still you can see that all this hustle and bustle happened just for nothing right why don john did all these things but still his uh, uh, all his uh, plans went wrong and why he wanted to inflict pain upon hero innocent hero so all these things are uh, actually uh, we are not getting any answers for them but still the title is justified in this play so that's how with the marriage ceremony the play ends now let's discuss some themes so that we can see in this play gender roles gender roles infidelity deception mask and mistaken identity overhearing female chastity see once hero lost a rumored to lost his uh, sorry her chastity her father needs to declare her as dead in order to prove her as innocent so this is what happens in our country like if a woman got 
uh, raped if she is alive then nobody will console her nobody will be uh, at her part to justify her cause justify her side but she will be condemned and nobody will be ready to accept her she will be always considered as impure right but on the other hand everybody will blame her for such a situation some other other reason will be there uh, that uh, people will blame that victim for the the pain that she suffered so female chastity is also another important theme in in this play much ado about nothing so that's all about this play i hope this was useful to you so please mention your major takeaway uh, themes the major characters and the plot or the, some uh, details that you have learned about this play in the comment section don't forget to do that and also uh, let me know about your impressions and suggestion and doubts if you have any also make a uh, mention uh, of all these things in the comment section and if you are not yet subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel also press the bell icon so that you get a notification whenever i upload a video in my youtube channel and also don't forget to visit my website www.highpoint.in or you can message me directly in this number given on the screen so that you i can inform you or i can share you my knowledge about ugc net english and also literature as well and if you want to join the whatsapp group you can go to the description box and click the link there and join it directly or you can message me i'll be very glad to share the link to you personally and you can join and uh, you can also follow me in instagram uh, my id is right here uh, in which i am also sharing lot of things in the form of uh, study cards notes and also small videos reels and um, stories related to english language and literature and of course daily quiz too so that's all about it let me meet you in the next video session until then bye bye and keep learning guys thank you